In this video, I will tell the story of the real-life heroes from the movie The Untouchables and the moments that didn't make it into the film or were changed, as well as the sources of Philippe Pozzo di Borgo's wealth. The real-life prototype of the character Omar Sy portrayed looked very different from the screen. The film's producers intentionally went for this inaccuracy because they really wanted Omar to play the lead role, so they changed the nationality of the character. The real Abdel Salou was born in Algeria. When Abdel was four years old, his parents sent him to Paris to be raised by their childless relative. For North African residents, this act was not unusual as many underprivileged Algerians did the same. Sons were sent to be raised by distant relatives while daughters were kept with the family. After Abdel's foster mother had her own children, he received much less attention. No one monitored his school attendance or his whereabouts during the day. He started to receive his upbringing on the streets. His favorite activity became stealing cameras from unsuspecting tourists at the foot of the Eiffel Tower. For a long time, Abdel's misdeeds went unpunished because he was a minor, but soon after he turned 18, he ended up in prison. Abdel served a year and a half, then was released and got a job at a pizzeria. However, he found it boring and did everything to get fired. For two years, he lived on unemployment benefits without feeling any remorse. One day in December 1994, he received another notification from the employment agency about the need for an assistant to take care of a paralyzed patient. For Abdel, it was a routine matter. He would come, get the notification rejected, and then show the rejection slip to the employment agency. Here is where the first divergence from the real story begins. In the movie Abdel, they start taking care of only Philippe. In reality, initially, Abdel took care of Philippe's wife for a year as well. The film does not delve into the origins of Philippe's enormous wealth. It is possible that this is because nobody expected the film to be such a huge success worldwide. It was primarily intended for the French audience. Meanwhile, the surname Pozzo di Borgo is quite well known. Philippe Pozzo di Borgo is a descendant of an ancient and noble Corsican family. French children extensively study the life of one of his ancestors in history lessons, as he was a sworn enemy of Napoleon himself. Even to this day, there is a saying in Corsica, as rich as Pozzo. Inherited from his wealthy ancestors, Philippe received a significant fortune, including businesses involved in the production of a very famous French champagne, Pommery. During the first half of his life, Philippe was a prominent executive and, as a form of leisure, preferred extreme sports rather than aristocratic entertainment such as theater or opera. This is why he felt repulsed when caretakers with two higher educations attended to him. Philippe was not accustomed to being pitied. He was always a very strict leader. In some sources, you can even find information that he suffered injuries because, before his paragliding flight, he planned a massive downsizing at his factory, and instead of focusing on the flight, he was contemplating how to carry out mass layoffs. However, in Philippe's own book, which served as the basis for the film, there is not a word about it. It could be because these speculations are untrue or because it portrays him in a negative light. Regardless, the paraglider crashed. Doctors managed to save Philippe, but as a result of the injuries, his body was completely paralyzed, and hospitals fought for his life for two years. Also, a few years before the accident, Philippe's wife, Beatrice, was diagnosed with cancer. The household needed a courageous, even crazy person who could handle the suffocating atmosphere of pain. Abdel became that person, proving himself to be a true fighter and a strong individual capable of providing warmth, even when everyone else had given up. However, Abdel didn't immediately connect with his employer. Initially, he agreed to the job because he hoped to steal something valuable from the wealthy house, as depicted in the film. On the very first evening, he stole a Fabergé egg. In the overall film, Abdel's antics were portrayed very accurately, but some simply couldn't fit within the runtime because he took care of Philippe for a whole ten years, and it's challenging to condense that into a two-hour screen time. On Philippe's godson's 18th birthday in 2002, Abdel invited a stripper. Philippe was furious and asked, Would you dare to do such a thing if it were your son's birthday? Abdel's reckless driving shown at the beginning of the film was just the tip of the iceberg. At night, Abdel, who also served as a chauffeur, loved joyriding the luxury cars from Philippe's collection. One day, the police knocked on the mansion's door. 
They informed Philippe that his Jaguar had been involved in an accident the previous night, but fortunately, no one was injured. In Philippe's book, he mentions that at the beginning, Abdel even tried to joke and said something like, I always said this car was very dangerous and we should get rid of it. Then, with a bruised ego, he added, Well, I'm at fault, didn't handle the turn. Here are the keys to the car, that's all that's left of it. The film correctly portrayed Omar Sy's character as a womanizer. However, there is no mention of his advances towards Philippe's assistant in his book. But it describes in detail how when Abdel broke up with yet another annoying girlfriend, Philippe lectured him extensively on the fact that a woman is not an object or a commodity, and she deserves respect. Philippe told Abdel that he would understand this when he gets married, and then he would be willing to give his life for his chosen one. The only completely fictional episode in the film is the correspondence between Philippe and the girl he later married. In reality, that never happened. Abdel and Philippe met their future wives during the same trip. In 2004, they traveled to Morocco. Philippe was searching for a more suitable climate, and as usual, Abdel helped him in his search. In the hotel they stayed at, Abdel took a liking to a young and pretty administrator named Amal. According to Abdel, when he first saw her, he had a strange feeling of being exposed, similar to what he felt when he met Philippe. Philippe met his second wife, Lala Jamila, during the same trip. They found themselves seeking shelter together during a rainstorm. Today, Abdel lives with his wife and three children in two cities, Paris and the Algerian town of Jelfa. Philippe lives in Morocco with his second wife. When they visit Paris, they stay with Amal and Abdel, and the hosts move to the living room to make room for the guests. I still take care of him, Abdel explains. Both Philippe and Abdel have written autobiographical books that have sold millions of copies. Today, they are in high demand as speakers and orators. They continue to maintain their friendship and now their families are also close. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel. This was Hustler. Until we meet again.